and he turns some sense looking at culturing cells. Thanks to Sam Moyle for producing this PowerPoint. So it's nice understanding we're going to go through. Human beings culture cells for a variety of purposes, describe techniques of cell culture, and discuss the applications and limitations of contemporary examples. So let's talk about where cell culture has been used. So Alexander Fleming is famous for discovering penicillin by accident. He didn't do much with his discovery, but he discovered it initially. Fungal spores contaminated plates and cleared a zone of bacteria around um, itself by releasing penicillin. And he noticed this on a plate that he had chucked in a bin. Then he went on holiday and he came back and saw that there was a ring of dead bacteria around uh, where uh, this fungus was touching his agar plate that he chucked in the bin. Bacterial cells die by lysing, which is where the cell uh, wall burst, basically. The cell wall didn't knit together, so the cell membrane leaked out, and that led to the you know, insides becoming the outsides and the cells dying. So a key thing to consider here is that he was using a growth culture medium. So in this case, it's agar. We'll go and talk about this in a bit more detail shortly. So people have been culturing cells for thousands of years, but culturing specific types of cells mainly related to food production and also alcohol production. So beer, wine, and bread all use yeast, which is a microorganism, and it breaks down sugars and produces ethanol and carbon dioxide. And we've looked at this in anaerobic respiration. It took a while for people to relate the yeast that was being used to produce beer, wine, and bread to fermentation, the chemical reaction that was occurring. Louis Pasteur famously demonstrated this um, so it's the yeast cells that were doing the fermentation, but it still took a while for this idea to take hold. The yeast that are used to do uh, fermentation have been passed down for, from baker to baker, from brewer to brewer for a very long time. So it's uh, their use, they're the cells that are being cultured in this case. So what is cell culture? Cell culturing is growing cells specifically for a use. Um, the advantage of doing cell culture technique is that you can make millions of cells in a very small space. You can make hundreds of generations in a very short amount of time since the cells reproduce pretty quickly. You can detect mutations and the organisms that are carrying them are isolated. So you can do a lot of experiments on mutating cells using cell culture techniques. You can study mutant cells lacking an enzyme and that's led to huge increases in our understanding of biochemistry. We culture cells, mess around with their DNA, see what that does to them in a very scientific way. Individual cell types can be grown to study their properties, so cancer cells for example, to identify what's happened to the cancer cells. And we can avoid some of the ethical issues involved in testing drugs or chemicals for example on animals by doing it on cells instead. So by doing it on the cells you can see the same effects but you don't have to you know, rub shampoo in a bunny's eyes for example. So where do these cells come from? Often they come from people. So this is Henrietta Lacks. Uh, she had a cancer, an ovarian cancer cancer, her cells would just keep on growing. So they were taken from her body and it was noted that they would keep on growing. And they've been very useful for reducing polio vaccines, but they're still being used in the laboratories all over the world. I used them when I was at uni. I used healer cells when I was at uni. There's a lot of ethical questions about um, the use of her cells when she didn't really give consent for it. Um, her family has gotten some compensation from her cells because many pharmaceuticals have been produced using her healer cells. So we'll have a look at this in class. They were the first human cells to be successfully cultured, and that, the reason for that is they just kept on growing. So they had an active version of an enzyme called telomerase, and that prevents the shortening of telomeres. The shortening of telomeres leads to your cells stopping division once they get to a certain age. But if you don't do that shortening, then the cells will just keep on reproducing and reproducing. And here's an electron micrograph of some healer cells. So how do we do cell culture technique? So we'll look at animals and plant cells. Uh, obviously, yeast and bacteria can be cultured in their own ways too, often using agar plates. Uh, what you do is you need to have a matrix for the cells to grow on. So this could be a petri dish, so we could use agar, but we could also use these culture flasks. These are very commonly used in the pharmaceutical industry. In the uh, culture flask, you put in a solution and that contains vitamins and other organic compounds that the animal cells need. Remember, animal cells can't make much by themselves uh, because well, we're heterotrophs. So you need to consume things. So your growth, growth medium will have vitamins, but also sugars and hormones and uh, proteins, amino acids. It'll have all the things required for the cells to grow in that medium. So that's that pink liquid down here. And obviously we also need the appropriate pH and temperatures to encourage growth of cells. And we'll have a look at this in terms of limitations later on. So how does it work? So we take the tissue that we want to culture and we mince it up. Uh, we use enzymes to break up the... Uh, support structures around the cells, so the other bits and pieces around the cells that hold them together, so the cells are just floating around 
individually rather than being attached to each other. And then we place those cells into a culture medium, put their culture medium into a nice situation, so happy temperature, correct pH, and all those kinds of things. The cells will start to grow on the surface of the culture medium, and then we can do things like use enzymes to break them up, um, I'll separate them, we can take some cells out and place them into a new bottle. Um, we could also just freeze them so then they can be used for further use later on. So once you produce the cells then you can do things like experiment on them or modify them and so on. So that's basically how it works. So you take your, your tissue, break it up into individual, individual cells, place those cells in the culture medium, keep the culture medium nice and happy and then you've got your cells that have reproduced. So what's an application? So spray on skin was developed in the early 2000s by Fiona Wood who was a doctor in Western Australia. She's a burns doctor, her job she treats burns patients. Typically what you do with a burns patient is you take a scraping of their skin that was still intact grow a graft of that and just basically layer that on top so plop the layer of skin that you've taken off of the body on the burn and this leads to some positive results but what Fiona Wood did is she decided to break up the skin into its individual cells grow those cells in culture medium and then spray them on so rather than just playing a graft placing a graft straight onto a wound site you break it up into the individual cells and then you spray those cells on the outcomes of using spray on skin are much better than just placing a graft on itself so you grow the skin cultures in culture medium and then you spray those cells from the culture medium onto the wound rather than just placing a graft on and you get better results Plant Plant cell culture is a little bit different and the reason for this is uh, plant cells are more readily able to divide after they've done their differentiation, so after the, G, uh, the GO phase of the cell cycle. What you do is you take your plant, you remove a small group of cells from the donor, you wash them with alcohol to remove contaminating microbes and this is one of the limitations we're going to look at. The cells that you've removed and washed you place into a nutrient median and again when you can have things that will make the cells happy, so hormones, glucose. The cells will then start to dividing. They can get into an undifferentiated callus that you can then remove cells from, or you can keep on growing it on and produce roots or shoots, depending on which hormones you're using and what you're trying to do with your plant. What that means is from the original donor, you can get hundreds of clones of that plant. So if your donor has a specific feature that is handy, you can multiply that in the clones without having to worry about growing a seed and harvesting the seeds and you know, keeping birds away from the seeds so the plants grow safely. All those kinds of things you don't have to worry about because you can just make lots of clones pretty easily using plant cell culture techniques. The other thing you can do, which is fun, is you can make hybrid species by dissolving the cell walls and mashing cell membranes together of plant cells. So you can make a hybrid species, so you can hybridize two plant species. So here's a picture showing how you can do it. So you take your tissue sample, so you might wanna, this is a really nice plant that you want to make hundreds of clones of. Uh, like I said, you wash the tissue in alcohol. Uh, you might break up the tissue into smaller bits and pieces so you've got individual cells or at least smaller clumps of cells, and then you place that onto your growth medium. So this is our growth medium here. So here's our undifferentiated callus, so you just leave it in a nice temperature for the callus to grow. You could then separate out the callus into individual cells using you know, enzymes that we talked about previously. And then you can place those individual cells into a new growth medium and you'll get a copy of your plant being produced. So further culturing, different mix of hormones, you can grow a whole plant, you might just get a few uh, root tips. It depends on what you want to do with your uh, plant. So why would we do this? There's lots of reasons you could culture a plant. You know, you might be trying to produce you know, hybrids that might be able to better resist, you know, heat or cold or salt. Um, if we're looking at things like wheat, uh, they might be better resistant to particular viruses or rusts, which are fungi that affect plants. So there's lots of reasons why you can do this. And one reason also is you can produce metabolites that might be useful in terms of pharmaceuticals. We found a plant that's producing a lot of a metabolite called AAT. The AAT is useful for presenting preventing hemophysema, hepatitis, and other skin disorders. So if you make a lot of clones of a particular plant that's producing a lot of this metabolite, you can get a lot of that metabolite produced in a pretty short amount of time without having to worry about collecting a seed, making sure the soil is lovely. You don't have to worry about those things you would need to worry about when you're growing plants agriculturally because you can do it in a lab where it's a lot more protected. A key factor in cell culture technique is you need to have sterile conditions. Normally, as a laboratory technician, you do this in a laminar flow cabinet, which means that there's only clean air passing over your sample. You don't have bacteria floating around in the air or molds and things like that as well. When the cabinet's not being used, it's exposed to UV light, which is good at causing mutations and killing things. It's also wiped down with 70% ethanol before and after use. Lids for flasks and plates are removed for very short amounts of time, so again, limiting airflow in that might be carrying microorganisms. And the tools that are used are sterilized with ethylene oxide. We used to use steam, but uh, plastic is a lot cheaper, so if we can use a 
chemical that works at room temperature without melting things at high temperatures that the steam would normally do, then um, that's handy. Limitations, you need to really make sure your culture medium has all the right ingredients to promote cell growth for the cells that you're trying to grow. Particular cells have small differences in requirements, and if you don't provide those requirements, then the cells won't grow particularly well. There'll need to be the right amount of water for osmoregularity, uh, pH and temperature need to be maintained, and if they're not, they go outside of the boundaries that the cells uh, can withstand, then the cells will start to die off. If you're going to try and produce large amounts of cells in the culture medium, you need to make sure it's aerated so oxygen is available to all the cells. Unless you're growing a monolayer, because then you've got one layer of oxygen on the top of the bottle that can that will provide for the cells that are there. And as I previously stated, you need to maintain very sterile conditions, otherwise opportunistic microorganisms will just move in and overtake all the cells that you're growing. A growth medium normally has the things that bacteria love to grow in as well, as well as yeast and molds and things like that. So you won't get your human cells being produced, you might get an awful lot of bacteria instead. So let's do our check. So human beings culture cells for a variety of purposes. You describe techniques of cell culture and discuss applications and limitations of contemporary examples. So in Flipper Science, we looked at cell culture. That's it for Science today. See ya. <laughs>